So we build up our arrangement here. Um, we're mostly, I'm going to set up a loop. Actually, a good thing to do is to try and find a section of the song that has everything playing at once. And then we can kind of go through. You want to find the most complex parts. That's really going to help you as you start to piece it together. So I'll just set up a uh, loop here. Start it from here. So I'm going to go ahead and solo some of these sounds. There's our drum track, there's our bass. So these two sort of go in tandem together. So I'm going to create a group. And we'll call this the bass group. Right now it's got everything in it, so we don't want that. I'm going to select and remove them all. We'll grab our uh, RY30 and our instrument. We'll do edit and mix. I'll hit OK. So now you'll notice that these have been assigned to the same group. What's great about this is I can now, when I hit play, I can adjust these together. You also notice that it assigns. Uh, a color based on your groups. This is actually a really cool thing that we haven't actually talked about. There is a color palette in here. The color palette allows you to adjust the colors of all of your different regions. It also adjusts the colors of our tracks as well. So I can increase the saturation. and the brightness. So I engage the color. So as you can see, audio tracks are colored differently. The, um, and we can even do it by group, however you want to organize it. But this definitely changes your mix view. So now it's really simple. I can see all of my audio instruments, my audio tracks, my aux ends, and of course my master bus right here. Uh, if I switch back to my edit page, you'll notice that my tracks have now even been uh, on my arrangement page are now clearly defined as the color we've been working on. This drum. This is going to be my main drum loop. So I want to make sure that everything else that I'm working with doesn't conflict with this drum loop. This has a lot of low end energy that's going to conflict with this. It's really important to think about where your low end comes from. Low end frequencies are huge. 30 hertz, think of it like 30 feet in order for that waveform to complete itself. They're massive, they're, and uh, depending on the amplitude. So they take up a lot of space in our sonic spectrum, in our, in our sonic palette. If you think about uh, if, if, if a song is a painting and it's going to take up so much of the, the bottom end. It's going to take up a lot of the, of the picture. So what we can do is use equal equalizers to remove a lot of that information. So what I'm going to do is uh, get under my EQs. I'm going to grab a 7-band EQ. And what I tend to use is a high-pass filter, 
which is right here. We'll need to turn it on. And what you'll notice when we have our high pass filter is that it basically will remove any of the low end. It's a, it's a low cut filter or a high pass filter. It lets high frequencies pass through. So depending on where we set this, it will depend on, on uh, how much low end is removed. You also notice here we have uh, the octaves. Depending on how extreme I set this, 12 deci uh, it's 12 dB per octave or 18 dB all the way up to 24 dB, which has a pretty drastic slope. So basically, a good place to start is maybe a 12 dB slope and, uh, or 18 dB, somewhere in that range. And I usually set it at about 120 hertz. Now I may have removed too much of that low end, so I'm going to bring it back a little bit. Now, it doesn't make any sense for me to listen to this in context by itself. We need to listen to it in the context of the song, or at least with the other drum loops. By removing some of that low end, I can actually make it a little bit more present in the mix. 